This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2577, Eight Things Every Person Should Do Before 8 a.m., part two, by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year. Today's episode is part two of a longer post. If you didn't catch part one yesterday, I'd recommend listening to that first. But if you're all caught up, then let's get right to part two and continue optimizing your life. Eight Things Every Person Should Do Before 8 a.m., part two, by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. Number four, hard physical activity. Despite the endless evidence of the need for exercise, only one-third of American men and women between the ages of 25 to 64 years engage in regular physical activity, according to the Center for Disease Control's National Health Interview Survey. If you wanna be among the healthy, happy, and productive people in the world, get in the habit of regular exercise. Many people go immediately to the gym to get their body moving. I've lately found that doing yard work in the wee hours of the morning generates an intense flow of inspiration and clarity. Whatever your preference, get your body moving. Exercise has been found to decrease your chances of depression, anxiety, and stress. It is also related to higher success in your career. If you don't care about your body, every other aspect of your life will suffer. Humans are holistic beings. Number five, act courageously. Quote, a person's success in life can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations he or she is willing to have. Tim Ferriss. You don't have to constantly be battling your fears. Actually, Darren Hardy has said that you can be a coward 99.930555% of the time to be exact. You only need to be courageous for 20 seconds at a time. 20 seconds of fear is all you need. If you courageously confront fear for 20 seconds every single day before you know it, you'll be in a different socioeconomic and social situation. Make that call, ask that question, pitch that idea, post that video. Whatever it is you feel you want to do, do it. The anticipation of the event is far more painful than the event itself, so just do it and end the inner conflict. In most cases, your fears are unfounded. As Seth Godin has explained, Our comfort zone and our safety zone are not the same things. It is completely safe to make an uncomfortable phone call. You are not going to die. Don't equate the two. Recognize that most things outside your comfort zone are completely safe. You can't change your life without courage. Courage is always required to get you from where you currently are to where you wanna be. As Mastin Kip has said, quote, unless you're in mortal danger, fear is a compass showing you where to go, end quote. Number six, create something, eat the frog. Quote, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. Sir Ken Robinson. You're not rewarded in life for what you know. Instead, you're rewarded in life for what you create. You must take your knowledge and experiences and do something with them. You need to find a creative outlet that allows you to build a body of work. In order to do truly creative work, you must embrace the unknown. As Seth Godin said, quote, If you're willing to do something that might not work, you're closer to becoming an artist, end quote. Creativity is highly personal and emotional. Good art is honest. And art can be anything. It can be a business, it can be writing, it can be coding. It needs to be something that is personal to you. You have to be willing to try something beyond what you've ever done before. If you wake up every day and begin doing highly creative work toward your biggest dreams and ambitions, you'll begin living a rare and incredible life. In order to make millions of dollars and stop living the nine to five, you must become a creator. You need to become a master at what you do. The morning time is the best time to creatively work since your brain is most creative first thing in the morning and your mind isn't muddled by all the happenings of the day. Mark Twain once wrote, quote, eat a live frog first thing in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day, end quote. That quote has become a principle that many successful people apply. The idea is simple. Put first things first. Do the hardest and most creative thing first thing in the morning. If you don't do your most important work first thing in the morning, you probably will never get it done. The day will begin to take on whatever form it does and you'll be left with another day stuck in the same place you were before. If, however, you do eat that frog every single day, you'll begin to see something truly magical happen in your life. You'll begin living a creative and harmoniously passionate life. You'll begin to create things that other people want. You'll begin to feel more zest and passion for life. 
you'll begin to dream bigger and imagine how you can turn your art into a business such that you can make money by creating value for people in the most personal way you possibly can. Ideally, you should try to spend at least 90 minutes per morning working on a creative project that directly translates to your ideal future and the dreams you're trying to live. If you can give yourself more time, all the better. But shoot for 90 focused minutes of creation. Again, your phone should still be on airplane mode. You should not have checked your email or social media. Number seven, listen to or read uplifting content. Ordinary people seek entertainment. Extraordinary people seek education and learning. It is common for the world's most successful people to read at least one book per week. They're constantly learning. I can easily get through one audiobook per week by just listening during my commute to school and while walking on campus. Taking even 15 to 30 minutes every morning to read uplifting and instructive information changes you. It puts you in the zone to perform at your highest. Over a long enough period of time, you will have read hundreds of books. You'll be knowledgeable on several topics. You'll think and see the world differently. You'll be able to make more connections between different topics. And number eight, invest in your key relationships. In addition to moving your own life forward, you'll want to deepen the connections with those you love. Your relationships are a very clear indicator of your quality of life and character. Relationships should be viewed as an investment rather than a cost. When they are viewed as an investment, then you start putting more into them. You start seeing their potential for growth and development. When you invest in key relationships, both personal and professional, your life starts to change. According to Joe Polish, quote, life gives to the giver and takes from the taker, end quote. If during your mornings you proactively do something kind, thoughtful, and useful to someone important in your life, you'll feel far more joy. You'll also likely make huge progress toward your goals because the more successful you become, the more your success depends on your relationships. Conclusion. After you've done this, no matter what you have for the rest of your day, you'll have done the important stuff first. You'll have put yourself in a place to succeed. You'll have inched toward your dreams. Because you'll have done all these things, you'll show up better in life. You'll be better at your job. You'll be better in your relationships. You'll be happier. You'll be more confident. You'll be more bold and daring. You'll have more clarity and vision. Your life will shortly change. You can't have mornings like this consistently without waking up to all that is incongruent in your life. Those things you despise will meet their demise. They'll disappear and never return. You'll quickly find that you're doing the work you're passionate about. Your relationships will be passionate, meaningful, deep, and fun. You will have freedom and abundance. The world and the universe will respond to you in beautiful ways. You just listened to part two of the post titled Eight Things Every Person Should Do Before 8 a.m. by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. Thank you again to Benjamin. So you just heard eight different things. And if you were to try to implement all eight of these today, you'd unlikely be successful. The key is to remember which one stood out to you and seemed like something you'd enjoy and try to tackle that first. Or if you wake up a little late like me, it's okay to adjust 8 a.m. to a more reasonable time. But in either case, try not to feel overwhelmed by these list type posts and pick something small, like a baby step you can take to head in the right direction. But I'll do it for now. I'll be back in just a moment with our weekly bonus episodes, so stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits.